Mercedes is looking to enter the Azerbaijan GP with a huge bang, but it seems like they're trying to hide their cards until the last possible moment, the qualification for the sprint race. Although the big package with the new design comes in Imola, Baku is an event in which Mercedes will introduce new changes. And while Wolf said that he doesn't expect too much of a competitive rise here, his rivals think otherwise. Join us as we go through the Mercedes voyage yet again, as well as why they're facing the sandbagging allegations yet again ahead of the Baku GP. After the failed no-pod side-pod design showed Mercedes what needed to be done in terms of becoming competitive yet again, the team wasted no time in bringing back old staff and taking a new approach. However, that's yet to come in Italy, and before that, we've got two races in which Mercedes will try to synergize the mechanical parts that are supposed to deliver better results with the new side pod design. The first one will come in Baku, with Mercedes working on the rear suspension. More precisely, the Silver Arrows are bringing upgrades to the heave spring, heave damper, and corner damper. One thing is for sure, the return of Allison brought a lot of positive energy to the team and not to take anything away from Elliot and his expertise, but the fact that he himself said he wasn't capable of doing what Allison did for Mercedes from 2017 to 2020 goes to show massive maturity in the team. This is what they need if they want to challenge Red Bull. And Allison is probably the closest that you can get when it comes to going head to head with the genius mind of Newey at Red Bull. Even though Mercedes is bringing a mechanical upgrade to Baku, they don't seem to be very overhyped about it. In fact, Wolf said that while the team has brought small upgrades to every race so far, they're not expecting to raise the level of competitiveness that much in Baku. We've been kind of used to statements like this from Mercedes, even on their most dominant days, as they go on to win races with a difference of 40 seconds to the third placed competitor, adding that they did a massive job over over the weekend and were able to turn things in their own hands. Although this scenario is very unlikely to happen in Baku, it's evident that the new suspension, along with some tweaks that the team will bring for this low downforce requirement track, such as a new rear wing and possibly some car setups, will bring Mercedes closer to the top. If not, they'll be more in position to affirm the second place behind Red Bull, and depending on the difference that Russell and Hamilton will trail Perez and Verstappen, we'll be able to witness whether a battle between these two is a possibility further down the road. To be honest with you, that's all I hope for. I mean, nothing would warm my heart more than a proper battle between Hamilton and Verstappen, even though it might not be for the championship, but for the good old days in 2021 when everything was so nail-biting and it made you sit at the edge of your bed. I can only hope and dream that from Imola onwards, that's what the scenario would be, given the fact that Ferrari are nowhere near challenging Red Bull and Mercedes, along with Aston Martin, are making drastic improvements in every area. But here comes the interesting part. The Mercedes rivals feel like the Silver Arrows are sandbagging ahead of the Azerbaijan GP, meaning that they have more pace than we could possibly anticipate thanks to the new upgrades being brought to the W14. While we've been focused on the new design of the car, Wolf and Allison explained that the side pods and the look of the W14 are just part of bringing a new version of the car. And when they say new design, it usually means a brand a new philosophy and a way that the car operates. That could be implemented from Baku onwards, or at least one step from it, which eventually means that Mercedes competition will be largely increased compared to Red Bull. Even so, if they manage to bring the car to the optimum middle section after building two polar opposite cars in two seasons, the wind tunnel time will definitely help them push for the championship later in the season. This is exactly what the other experts believe in, and when talking about this matter, Von der Grint spoke about Mercedes deciding to change the car mid-season after being pleased that they stuck with the zero side pods concept.
What this effectively means is that the team wants to go under the radar as the underdogs and the team that failed to successfully interpret the technical regulations for the second consecutive year. So when they manage to pull more performance out of the W14, then everyone will applaud them for making such rapid progress when nobody else hoped for it. I give my kudos to Mercedes for this. It's always nice to have the role of an underdog going into a race because a lion is most dangerous when it's pressed against the wall. When talking about this matter, Von der Grint added, I liked that they stuck to their concept. They had faith in it. Now, you probably think it's not such a good concept after all. Then I think, what did you discuss and analyse in the winter? Because this is a late conclusion. If you have to change it now and want to change a whole concept, that might say something about the people who left. I think the sounds are more in the panic atmosphere. You can also hear that from Wolf. He has actually already given up. But that is, of course, also a bit of a feint because he quietly hopes that things will work out somehow. Russell was also quite fast. They were unlucky that he broke down there. It can't all be in harmony there. A bit of chaos and panic. Now, from everything that's being said and done, there is one thing that I can conclude. Mercedes will be a force to be reckoned with in Baku. While the engine reliability is raising some eyebrows in Brackley, it points in one direction. The team decided to rack up the power of the W14 and see where it can take them further down the road. After all, look at what happened with Red Bull in 2022 in the first three races. Verstappen had two DNFs and Perez had one and when they managed to fix those issues, along with the right design of the car, everything else was history. What do you think about Mercedes engine reliability? Let us know in the comments below because we do appreciate your opinion and we read every single comment from you guys. But what should Mercedes fear in Baku? It's one thing to try and rack up the engine to maximum power and hope that it won't break and it's another thing for it to work out for you. Yep, it's the right way to go, but it's not always promising success. And while I'm very happy to see an improved version of the W14 in Azerbaijan, one that could take the fight to Red Bull even closer, I think Mercedes needs to stay on the ground and accept one thing. Catching up to Red Bull will be much easier said than done. What I definitely love hearing from Mercedes, though, is how much pace they were able to find in the previous two to three weeks, as said by Russell. And that could very well mean that the Baku GP will be one of those tracks in which Mercedes can definitely surprise the rest of the competition. After all, it's a sprint race. And even though the new format means that the drivers will be more stable now, it definitely guarantees one thing, more action. Now that the sprint event and the main race are going to be separated, the drivers will be willing to risk more on at the track next to the Caspian Sea, meaning that Mercedes may unleash more power out of the W14 than we can imagine. That's definitely to be expected from a team that started the season the way it did and the fact they've made such great progress in the following two races after Bahrain only goes to show they have much more in store. I wouldn't mind seeing Hamilton and Russell battle it out for the win as the last thing that a diehard Formula 1 fan wants to watch is a monotonous Formula 1 season, something we've suffered from 2014 to 2020 and something that has repeated itself in 2022. With this in mind, what do you think about the allegations of Mercedes sandbagging? Do you think that the Silver Arrows have more in store for the following weekend? Let us know in the comments below.